On the seventh day of October, Halloween gave to me seven gold ones shooting, six psychics scamming, five naked witches, four alien spelunking, three UFO abductions, two deputy so-and-sos, and a masked hawk being creepy. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the 31 Days of Horror. I am your companion for this journey through 31 uh, Halloween-rific films. Uh, my name is Bo, and you can find more of me on the Dark Parade, but we'll talk about that later. Uh, what we are doing right now is working our way through an early run of movies done by Blumhouse. And so that's kind of been our recurring theme for this first set of movies. Uh, we've got this one and one more to go before we shift to uh, another mini theme within our 31 days of Halloween. But I would be remiss if we did not mention this film, The Belko Experiment, in uh, this run of films. Because it has such a interesting backstory and pedigree, which is it's a movie written by James Gunn who you would know as the guy what did all those Guardians of the Galaxy movies. But if you're in the know, he also did movies like Super and Slither and Tromeo and Juliet and is this wildly inventive kind of writer and director. And this is one of those movies that it felt like he had in a drawer somewhere and when he hit big with Guardians of the Galaxy, the people were like, hey, we'll pay you for, you know, whatever, uh, whatever amount of money you want for this stuff that you've got kind of sitting around. And so, you know, the Belko experiment was something he had in the drawer. I don't know that to be sure. Uh, I don't know that's the real truth, but that's what it feels like, because this feels like a early to mid career James Gunn, not a... Guardians of the Galaxy James Gunn kind of movie. Um, so I'm going to operate on this stupid theory that I have come up with and, and go from there. And so not only is it written by James Gunn, who is a writer I like quite a bit, and there were some really nice James Gunn-esque moments in this movie, but there is also uh, the director, Greg McLean, who did uh, a number of very good films, including Wolf Creek and Rogue. And depending on the day you ask me, Rogue is in my top 10 for sure. Animal Attack movies, it's it's absolutely terrific. Uh, and he also did, uh, what else? The Darkness, which is uh, a movie I have never seen with Kevin Bacon and Rada Mitchell. I feel like I ought to see that at some point. And has done some television and et cetera, et cetera. But he's a, he's a really good director. And and if you haven't seen Rogue, by the way, you should see Rogue. Like, I'm sure you've seen Wolf Creek. Everybody's seen Wolf Creek. Rogue was the movie he did as a follow-up to Wolf Creek. And it's great. It's, it's a, a great crocodile is gonna eat you kind of movie. Uh, but so he's directing. James Gunn is writing, like, how could the movie be bad, right? And the movie's not bad. And the movie is very, uh, you know, allegorical to some extent, but the, the idea is that John Gallagher Jr., who is an actor I also like, you probably have seen him in the newsroom, and if you saw Mike Flanagan's Hush, he was the, the villain in that, um, and he's, he's a fun actor, and Tony Goldwyn, uh, who you may remember as the guy what gets eaten by demons at the end of Ghost... Uh, he is the head of this corporation, the Belco Corporation, and it's a uh, an entity, a corporate entity that has transferred its uh, staff and and operations to Bogota, Colombia, and it's a bunch of people all working in this building. One day they get to work, and the building shuts down, like metal plates drop over all the doors and windows and a voice says hey in the next hour uh five people need to die and at first everybody's like no we're not going to do that and then you realize like oh all of these people have 
trackers, in theory, you know, in quotes, trackers implanted in them that was supposed to help in the event that they were kidnapped. You know, there that is something that occasionally happens in South America where uh, Americans and others will be kidnapped and held for ransom. So this was, in theory, a measure against that. But what it really is, is it's a charge that will blow the back of your head off. And so if you do not kill the number of people that this voice is requesting, then the, the voice is just going to kill people at random. And, uh, which leads to some real Lords of the flies kind of stuff. And that's really what the movie is about, right? Is like, how do you maintain your humanity in an environment in which the whole point is to reduce people to a, like an animal state. And so there is some question of who is conducting this experiment, why are they doing it, and, you know, spoilers for the Belko experiment, that stuff is never totally answered. Uh, it's more hinted at than it is uh, answered. But it's a fascinating movie, and uh, one of the things I really, really like about it is that it has an incredible cast, not just John Gallagher Jr. and Tony Goldwyn, but John C. McGinley, who is an actor I really, really like, um, he is a uh, like former military guy and is just on the edge. Like th this is an excuse for him to just lose his absolute mind and start murdering people. And you've got Michael Rooker bouncing around in this movie, which is always welcome again. A you know sort of a James Gunn. Uh, staple and Sean Gunn is in this movie and he's very funny as you know this sort of stoner character that uh, is trying to figure out the conspiracy behind the conspiracy kind of thing and uh, David Des Desmalchian I think is how you pronounce that um, who had what played Mr. Polka Dots in that uh, Suicide Squad movie and uh, has been in, you know, The Dark Knight and was in Dune and stuff like that. So he's um, a really good actor as well, really fun. And he's kind of fun in this. And it's one of those movies that reveals the, sort of how close we are to anarchy as a society. I, I think there's a, a Stephen King quote that says something like, yeah, we're all civilized until the lights go out. And that's kind of this situation, right, is is you start pitting people against one another. And even those who are trying to do the right thing and are trying to maintain some element of humanity, um, that it's, it's a thin veneer. And at a certain point, all of us become the beast that we are deep down. And uh, it's, it, it's a savage movie. It's bloody as all get out if you want something that's you know, kind of fast paced and gory and fun and, uh, more than a little pessimistic about the nature of humankind. Um, the Belko experiment like fits all of that really, really well. And, uh, there's not a ton more to say about it. This is going to be one of our, our shorter discussions, I believe, uh, because there's beyond what I've said. Yeah, this is really good. You should see the Belko experiment. It's very violent. It's really fun. Um, it's filled with interesting and and funny performances. And um, yeah, and it's a, you know, why is it on this list? Well, I mean, obviously it's a Blumhouse film, but also because I don't think it gets talked about that much. And I that's a bummer. I think it's a really, really solid movie. And there was a similar movie that came out around the same time, a movie called Mayhem with Steven Yeun. And uh, I do really like that movie as well, but I kind of think Belko Experiment is the better movie. It's a little more self-contained. When you get to the end of the movie, I think it's a little more clever with uh, what it has to say. And yeah, I think Belko Experiment is great. So check it out. It's a, it's a good, palate cleanser, um, not even a palate cleanser, it's just a good entry into the Blumhouse uh, catalog before we get to the end of the run uh, on our Blumhouse movies come tomorrow. So, um, yeah, I'll leave it there. Go see uh, the Belko Experiment if you haven't seen it. It's uh, it's on some of them streaming services. I think it's on, like, 
Tubi or Pluto or something like that where you can watch it for free and, and it's worth every penny of free. Uh, so I hope you enjoy it. And uh, if you're enjoying this run, by all means, come discuss these movies. Uh, if you go to legionpodcasts.com, you will see posts for all the 31 days of Halloween that we have done thus far. Uh, on all of those are links to the social media. And uh, I do not tend to hang out on uh, Twitter or Facebook uh, very much or Instagram and, and, and those kinds of things. But there is a link to the Discord and I am 100% on the Discord uh, almost all the time. And uh, so if you want to drop by and say like, hey, I saw the Belko experiment and you're full of crap. That movie wasn't any good. Uh, then, yeah, let's talk about it. I'm uh, I'm always uh, in, in, like looking forward to those kinds of conversations. Maybe not as aggressive. You don't have to be mean about it. I, you know, uh, if, if you cut me, do I not bleed? But I do love talking about these movies. It's my favorite time of year. I, I am just awash in watching horror movies right now, and I could not possibly be happier. So, uh, yeah, I, it's exciting. And, and we're wrapping up the first week. So, you know, from here on out, uh, we're, we're getting into not just some Blumhouse stuff. Spoilers, right around the corner is a run of, like, classic horror movies, some of which I had never seen. And, and they use this as an excuse to watch some stuff that I should have seen forever ago. And so get ready for that. And, uh, and then beyond that, we've got some Asian horror movies and some, and then, and then we just get into a run of movies that are like, Hey, it's Halloween. Let's watch this stuff. So, uh, it's, it's going to be an exciting time here at the 31 days of Halloween. I hope you continue to join us. There's one of these dropping every ding dong day. Uh, if you are listening to this on the Legion podcast feed, I encourage you to uh, subscribe also to the Dark Parade on the podcatcher of your choice, which is the show I do on the weekly. And uh, yeah, and if you're listening on the Dark Parade, then you know be sure you're you're subscribing to the Legion podcasts feed as well, uh, because that's where you get not only this stuff, but uh, you get you know Duncan and Bo come correct, and you get Pick Six movies that I do. And you get uh, the Psycho cast, and you get Cinema Psyops, and you get uh, the Friday Nightmares, and you get Hello, This Is the Doom Show, and you get uh, the uh, the Butcher Shop, and like a, a number of great podcasts. So uh, don't sell yourself short. Uh, what am I leaving out? Podcast on Haunted Hill. I'm probably leaving something out, and I apologize. So, uh, but check all those shows out on the Legion Podcast main feed. All of that stuff is available wherever you get your fine podcasts, uh, the podcast catcher of your choice. And uh, yeah, and that'll do it for this time. So, hey, uh, go out there, have yourselves a very spooky Friday. Uh, the weekend is upon us. There is no reason not to be spooky. And uh, and I look forward to hearing uh, from you on, on the Discord. And uh, let me know what you think. So, and until tomorrow, boils and ghouls. Uh, this has been another entry into the 31 days of Halloween. See you tomorrow.